Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how I use the color wheel to choose the colors that I have in my watercolor palette. Let me start by saying that color selection is a very personal thing. Everyone will have their favorite colors, the colors that they really like. So there's no right or wrong way to uh, choose colors. There are actually different school of thoughts. Some people may like to choose a warm and cool version of each primary color. Some people may like to choose colors around the color wheel. I'm very sure you have your own way of choosing colors. Today, I just want to share with you some of the things that I have learned over the years about um, the color wheel and watercolor. So the colors that I have in my palette are actually based on the warm and cool version of primary colors. So I have lemon yellow, new gumbosh, I have phthalo blue, French ultramarine, I have quinacridone red and quinacridone magenta, and I have some convenient colors like sap green, phthalo green, cerulean blue, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and permanent brown. So the first tip I want to give you is if you want to mix a vibrant secondary color like an orange, purple or a green, choose a primary color that is close to that secondary color which means uh, in this case if you want to mix a bright orange, choose a warm red or choose a warm yellow. If you choose a cool yellow and a cool red, for example, colors that are far away from the vibrant secondary colors, you are not going to be able to uh, use the cool yellows and cool reds to mix that vibrant orange. And if you want to mix a vibrant purple, again with the help of the color wheel, look at where the purple is and choose colors that are close to it. In this case, you can perhaps choose permanent Alizaro Crimson and French Ultramarine. And if you want a vibrant green, choose the colors that are close to the green that you want. A very vibrant, cool yellow, lemon yellow for example, and phthalo blue. So how do you know which colors are warm or cool? Well, generally speaking, colors that are close to red on the color wheel, those are the warm colors. Colors close to the blue are the cool colors. And within each primary colors, there are actually a lot of different variations. So you can get warm yellows or cool yellows. Um, now this is actually a very simplified color wheel. So just by looking at this, you probably won't be able to know whether or not Hansa Yellow Medium is a warm or cool. Uh, so um, this is where I'm going to show you the color wheel from handprint.com. This is a very helpful color wheel that I found on handprint.com. All the colors and their pigments, they are laid out according to the color wheel. I'll put the link to where you can find this color wheel in the video description below. So here we have the yellows, we have the reds, the blues, and the greens. All the vibrant colors, they are on the outer edges, and all the muted colors, the less saturated colors, they are towards the middle. So using this color wheel, uh, you can choose warm and cool versions of each primary colors very easily. So for example, if you want to choose a cool yellow, uh, you can take a look at lemon yellow py 175 and here we have 175 so lemon yellow uh, i mean if you look at the name it's obviously a cool yellow but there are actually certain colors that are not that obvious as to whether or not they are warm or cool so for example with hansa yellow there is hansa yellow medium light and deep so those will be the cool warm and uh, middle version of yellows and if you want to choose a warm yellow, you can look um, at yellows that are closer to the reds. So we have Hansa Yellow Deep here, for example, Cadmium Yellows, uh, and we have all these orange colors. Now this color wheel is very helpful because it takes a lot of the guessing work out when it comes to choosing color. So take a look here, there are so many reds and sometimes I mean, red itself, it's a warm color, but there are actually cool and warm versions of the red. So just by looking at the name, sometimes it's almost impossible to tell whether or not that red is cool or warm. But if you take a look at this color wheel, all the colors are arranged properly. So if you want a warm red, you can go with pyro red or scarlet. 
And if you want a cool red, you can go with Crinicridon Rose or Crinicridon Magenta. Using the color wheel to pick your colors is going to make your color palette more versatile. So for example, you may have colors from this side of the wheel, but you're missing colors from this area. So using the color wheel, you can see what are some possible colors you can add to your color palette to make it more versatile when it comes to mixing. Other than using the color wheel to help me choose colors, I also like to choose colors based on the pigments that are used so that the colors can work well together. So for example, let's say if I have a Hansa yellow medium, I may want to choose a warmer yellow that also happens to use the pigment that is used to create Hansa yellow medium. In this case, this is PY97. So I may look for a warmer yellow that has PY97. In this case, it would be Indian yellow. So this is a mix of PY97 and PY150, which is nickel azo yellow. So having these two colors together, I know that they are going to work nicely together because this color already has a pigment from this Hansa Yellow Medium. But again, this color selection thing, it's very personal. Some people may not like to have duplicate colors, so they may just go for a totally different warm yellow that doesn't use any pigment um, that is already in your palette. And lastly, I like to include as many primary colors as possible. Well, not with this palette, but with another palette that I have. I have three variations of yellow, three blues, and three reds. So with primary colors, you can mix any other colors you like. With three sets of primary colors, you can have a very versatile mixing palette. I also included some convenient colors like sap green, thalo green, burnt sienna. These are convenient colors that you can mix with the primary colors, but it's so much faster to have the colors pre-mixed. You can definitely use the primary colors to mix the color of burnt sienna. I use this color a lot to mix with French ultramarine to produce beautiful gray, so it makes more sense for me to have burnt sienna from the tube rather than mixing it with the primary colors. It saves me so much time. As for thalo green that's currently in my palette, I'm thinking of swapping this out because I can actually mix this color very easily with thalo blue that I already have and a little bit of yellow. So by taking this color out, I can add another color to make my palette more versatile. So that's how I use the color wheel to choose the colors that I'm currently using. Let me know in the comment section below what methodology you are using to choose the colors you are using. I would love to hear from you. Before you go, I just want to let you know I'm selling some excess watercolor paint in half pens to make space to get more colors to test and also to make more videos like this. So if you want to help me out, you can check out the list of colors that I'm selling from the link in the video description below. All right, see ya.